It's Easter Monday. A string of defeats has sent Peterborough's promotion push into a tailspin. And despite troubleshooting Big Ron's best efforts, beleaguered boss Steve Bleasdale struggling to make his team perform. Today, it's a must-win game at relegation-threatened Rochdale. No wonder owner Barry Fry's fretting. He's openly blasted his manager and players over the drastic slump in form. Fearful a half-million-pound potential windfall would go up in smoke if their promotion bid fails. Very nervous. I haven't had a cigar since the old king died, and I'm not, I've had a red wine before the game, God almighty. I'm never nervous as a player, never nervous as a manager. I'm shitting myself as an owner. <laughs> As the squad arrives at Spotland Stadium, Steve seems calm. There's someone under so much pressure. My honest opinion is that I do need to win. Um, we don't want to get beat. No, but if they play the same as they did at Berry in the last away game, um, with the same sort of positive, sort of, from the word go, the same positive outlook, um, then they're well capable of winning here. Steve is keeping his tactical options open, dependent on how Rochdale line up. But despite Ron and Barry's advice, there's no indication he's going to change the style of play. These are a 4-3-3 team or a 4-4-2 team. And I'm going to go into that shape, which will be Newt, Bally, Arbs, Ryan, Ledge, Cardi, Ganey, Faz, Crow and Logan. Every one of us, be at the races. I know you can do it. With no improvements on the injury front, Steve is forced to field the same team that lost to Boston. The early signs aren't good. Despite being 12 places behind the posh in the league, Rochdale, in the blue, starts stronger and creates several chances. Lambert, awkward bubble, might come here to Cartwright, who forces a very good save from Tyler, who hangs on second time. Now Gary Jones, ball sits in nicely, and Mark Tyler behind the fight of the ball. When we haven't got the ball, you've got to do a job! It's immediately clear to Ron that the posh's problems stem from a lack of movement and poor work rate from some of the players. Posh on, Faz! Faz, are you watching? You want a ticket, Faz? I'll buy you a ticket if you want to watch it. <laughs> fucking marking the fullback. Oh, fuck You don't tackle like that. At half-time, the posh are lucky to be on level terms, but Steve doesn't seem to think the players are doing a lot wrong. Nice and relaxed. Let's get all our points across. Defensively, you've done absolutely tremendous. If you raise your game 10%, as we've said on the line, I personally think you win this 2-0, but it's how you win it. As troubleshooter, Ron so far kept his dressing room input to carefully chosen words of encouragement. But amazed Steve's letting the players off the hook and failing to address the real problems behind another dismal display, he finally lets rip. Ron, anything, son? Yeah, I think they've got to raise the game an awful lot more than they are doing, Steve. There's too many waiting for something to happen. In midfield, I think you're half a yard off the game. You and Peter, you're getting five yards away and thinking you're pressing people. You're not. You've got to get right in there and stop them playing. Their two central midfield players have run the game for me. Davy Farrell, you've got to be a lot fucking more positive if you want to play on the wing. I don't know where you're playing, Dave. I think you've got to get wide, give outlet balls for B. Timmy on one side or... Adam on the other, and then you've got to scoot. You've got to run people with or without the ball. But what we're saying, Ron, is before, we're saying to Arbs, open up and play Tim, and then give it to yeah. Faz. Sometimes he's trying to get and it's not coming. Yeah, but so we understand what you're saying to there. Be fair, to be with fair. regards to the midfield, I think the midfield are battling well and trying well anyway. They're, they're not, not, get, not battling. Steve, they're not getting near the bloody game. If you want me to be cruel, you're not getting near the game. I would dig both of you out, and you, you both on his lads, and you both played a lot of games. Now I think you're going to get quicker into their midfield and turn it around and dominate. Now, I know at times you're getting outnumbered, but when you're close to the ball, fucking go in and win it. Go in and win it. I don't mean desperate tackles, or I don't mean silly challenges. I mean, just get around people's feet. As we'll find out, Steve's inwardly seething over Ron's criticism of his midfield players, but decides to drop it for the time being. That's great stuff. Good play. From the restart, the posh midfield do look sharper, imposing themselves on the game and stepping up the service to the front men. It's a good surge down that far side. Peter Gay, Victor Carden and New 
but there's still no end product. And Newton, can he get the crossing? He can. He goes towards the near post where Pro was lurking but couldn't connect. Towards Danny Crook. Adam Newton, Crow has continued his run down the far side. Logan waits to the middle, Crow's cross, Logan! Oh, he should have scored! Glorious, guilt-edged opportunity. And Richard Logan has fluffed his lines. What a chance. Then, all too predictably, after 72 minutes. Press, 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 Gary Jones press, now for Rochdale, press, Jones. Press, press. And Lambert goes for goal, bobbly surface, Tyler Spells, and Christie scores! In a desperate bid to rescue the game, Steve brings on Lloyd Opara, his recent signing from non-league Chessent. But the change in personnel has little effect. More chances are squandered. To spin, he can, but he shot his wide. Lloyd Opara. It's on there towards St Ledger. St Ledger's ball for Opara. He's got two, three in the middle here. Opara, but his cross is awful. the final whistle. The game finishes 1-0 to Rochdale. I'm just stood there for five minutes waiting for someone to fucking have the bollocks to do it and he's just fucking done it. That's what I was fucking wanting. Bollocks. And if you get beat by having bollocks, I don't give a shite. Big bollocks. That's what it is. We're all depleted. But we've got to keep Derek going on with it. It's to the wire. Once again, his players have capitulated to a team near the foot of the league. Steve appears to have hit a brick wall. What do I do more, Ron, as a manager? I have done absolutely Steve, fucking Steve, everything. Steve, tranquilo, tranquilo. Maybe now. And I, I'm not quite sure how you're going to do it, what personnel is going to be available. Maybe it might be time to start looking and saying, shall we play a little bit more? Shall we go for a more adventurous system in the home game? It might be. You've got to be fresh. You've got to be alive. You can't go under. I know. Because, you know, it's one of the unfortunate things of management. If the management, if the people see the manager going under, they go under. After your two days off, take your missus out, go and have a drink, go and have a meal and all that. Don't go home and fret and all that about it now. Just go home, get yourself your mind not, clear. I'm a strong character. I know. Well, uh, when we, when but it's frustrating when I haven't got the players. Though still unconvinced by Steve's tactics, the brunt of Barry's anger is reserved for the players. I've told him it before, I've told him it again. That's why they're playing for me. They ain't good enough to play anywhere else. The majority of them is simple as that, really. So you can't expect um, uh, too much from them because... Uh, um, most of them is a bunch of losers, really, and that's what we're getting at the minute. And uh, it's a shame, but it's fact. The defeat means the posh drop out of the playoff spots. Their promotion hopes now rest on winning all their remaining games, while playing the teams around them drop points. Later that week, the posh are back in training. But Ron's half-time intervention at Rochdale has been gnawing away at Steve. 
He feels it undermined his authority and sent the wrong signals out to the players. Well, I had a quiet chat with Ron and he just said, well, look, Ron, I don't mind you being in the dressing room because that's what we've agreed, but there's only one manager and kind of, you know, let's have a bit of leeway here. Ron Atkinson's been a great manager over the years and Ron Atkinson would not have anyone talking. So if someone in the dressing room is disagreeing with the manager and all the players are looking at me, players have told me irrelevant if they say on camera they haven't, they've said they're confused. I've been told, I've been, been suggested to me that I upset you two in my comments about you at half time. No, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Uh, I wasn't, I never took it. Why, who said you was upset? You remember when I first came and said mm -hmm. that if I've got anything to say that I think is of value, I'll say it to you. I think it helps you. Yeah, that's all it was. That's all I seen. That I was just trying to trying to get us to trigger the whole mm. yeah. whole team. Yeah, it wasn't a problem to me. Okay. Well, I haven't said anything on. No. I appreciate no. your advice. Okay. Yeah. All right, lad. Good lad. All the best. I've just cleared that. Up. Oh, they said they did. They said there was no problem. Good. Good. In fact, they were a bit mystified actually. I made a legitimate observation where I pinpointed two players. The players themselves appear to have accepted that criticism. Well, it wasn't a criticism, it was an observation, more than a criticism. Um, and it's maybe something, maybe something that Steve doesn't do enough of. He, he tends to generalise as opposed to um, identify things and, and deal with them. Let's go! Let's go. Right, 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 right. Oh. The Rochdale result has finally forced Steve to change the team's tactics. For the upcoming game against Macclesfield, he's decided to go for a more traditional shape, something Ron's been trying to persuade him to do for weeks. OK, tomorrow, Sean Tuck in. Macclesfield, 4-4-2. That's the shape that we're going to start with. When the ball's live to me, you all switch on and we stop and we just work at a just basic 4-4-2. To accommodate the change, Steve's decided to move rising star centre-back Sean St. Ledger to right-back. But with Premiership scouts due to watch him on Saturday and the chance of a lucrative transfer, he's reluctant to play out of position. St. Ledger's been on a collision course with Steve over the past few weeks, and this looks like reigniting their feud. No one's having a go at you. Oh, he's got fucking something to say! As Steve works on the new shape, St. Ledger makes it clear he doesn't want to play ball. Unfold your arms, Sean, and tuck in. I want you tucked in more. What are you saying? What are you saying, Ledge? 